Video of unidentified flying objects, recorded by the U.S. military. What we're talking about are advanced aerospace vehicles that outperform, outmaneuver anything that humanity has ever created. Millions in U.S. tax dollars spent on the study of extraterrestrials visiting Earth. It was actually shocking that the Pentagon had a UFO investigative department. And an anxious public growing more and more impatient for answers. If they have technology that can wipe us out, people would demand to know more. It used to be a topic reserved almost exclusively for conspiracy theories and science fiction fan conventions. But in recent years, between declassified military footage of UFOs and even public statements by a number of American presidents, is it possible that the evidence is already in confirming the existence of extraterrestrial life? Perhaps the truth can be found in America's book of secrets. December 16th. 2017, the New York Times publishes an article revealing the existence of a top secret military program known as ATIP, the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. The purpose of this previously classified government funded organization was to identify and investigate unidentified flying objects. When the existence of ATIP was revealed, the Department of Defense tried to say that it was a program looking at next generation aerospace threats. Russia, China, aircraft, missiles, drones, that sort of thing. Unfortunately for the DOD, that line became impossible to hold because the Defense Intelligence Agency had, had to write to Congress about this program in December 2017, and in explaining to Congress what work had been done, it was clear ATIP was looking at UFOs, and yes, maybe something extraterrestrial. ATIP ran from 2007 to 2012, receiving $22 million in government funding. And the man championing this classified program? Senate Majority Leader, Harry Reid. When I first started becoming interested in this, virtually everyone told me, stayed away from that. This is not going to help your career. I thought that it's important that we start studying some of this stuff scientifically. And I think we made it so that the military had something to look to as a foundation. In explaining to Congress what work had been done by ATIP, the Defense Intelligence Agency listed 38 scientific studies, and the titles of the papers were released. They solicited futuristic papers from scientists from around the world in a variety of disciplines. And this is to get a handle on different elements of UFO science. And so you get these fascinating papers on things like traversable wormholes and space-time metric engineering and invisibility and cloaking. For decades, the government has refused to answer questions about UFOs, or when they did answer, they belittled it. They denied having any significant knowledge. Well, they have been studying them, and it's a dramatic change from what we were told just a few years ago. The revelation of ATIP has led many to re-examine previous government-funded UFO programs, which were also declassified in the last few decades. The modern UFO phenomenon really starts in 1947 with the Roswell incident. And it's no coincidence that 1947 is also when the US government gets into the game. In 1947, they set up a research program called Project Sign to research and investigate the UFO phenomenon and determine what it was they were dealing with. Project Sign, which was led by Air Force General Nathan Thergut Twining, investigated sightings of UFOs as potential threats to national security. 
because it was also the beginning of Cold War tensions with the Soviet Union, understanding what was flying in the skies above the United States was a high priority for the federal government. These were Air Force efforts to have investigators accepting UFO reports from the public, sometimes from the military. And that went until the end of the summer of 1948, and that was replaced by something called Project Grudge. Project Sign looked at the sightings in an even-handed way, but Project Grudge was much more skeptical. And as the name implies, some of the people involved with this really didn't want to be looking at this subject at all. Project Grudge may have initially dismissed the notion that potentially extraterrestrial spacecraft visiting Earth was worthy of serious consideration. But just three years after its creation, an incident occurred that forced the US military to reassess its position. Fort Monmouth, New Jersey, September 10th, 1951. Army Signal Corps officers spot an object on radar racing across the sky at an incomprehensibly high speed. They detected a very, very fast-moving object coming in. I think it was estimated at 900 or more miles per hour. In 1951, we had nothing that could do that speed whatsoever, not even close. It was this dull gray, disc-shaped type of an object. The Air Force and the Army got very worked up over this. So they sent a massive report on this to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. The new Air Force Director of Intelligence was a major general named Charles Cabell, and he really wanted to get to the bottom of this. But with Project Grudge, if something could possibly be identified, a possible balloon or possible seagulls, then that became the answer. And when Cabell realized the starry state of investigation Project Grudge was doing for UFOs, Cabell said, this is absolutely unacceptable. So we're going to bump up the program, and they renamed it Blue Book. Project Blue Book was established in March of 1952. And just a few months later, those in charge found themselves investigating a new and unsettling case. Over the course of two weekends in July 1952, a group of 10 UFOs was reportedly seen flying in the sky above Washington, D.C. Project Blue Book officials were inundated with eyewitness reports of the phenomena from military officers, civilian pilots, and residents throughout the city. We're talking right over the Capitol, and everybody saw it. It was reported in all the newspapers. It was happening not on just one day, but consecutively. Fighter jets were scrambled. But every time their jets got close, they would disappear off radar. Our communications went completely down because of the inundation of reports and all of this stuff. And we saw that as a threat. In the aftermath of the hysteria surrounding the sightings over the nation's capital, the US government recognized the national security implications of widespread panic that was being caused by these strange craft. And that's why Project Blue Book's investigative mandate was drastically changed. What started as an open-minded and relatively transparent inquiry became what some describe as a campaign of public disinformation. The word from up high was very obvious, that you are not to explain these reports, you are to explain them away. Blue Book's job was to disable the UFO phenomenon. In its 17 years of existence, Project Blue Book investigated 12,618 UFO sightings. Of those, 94% were dismissed as having a conventional explanation. But that left more than 700 cases categorized as legitimate unidentified phenomena worthy of continued study. Then, on, my mark. on December 17th, 1969, the program was, as some put it, curiously shut down. Mark. Just a few months after the Apollo 11 mission launched the first human beings to ever set foot on the surface of the moon. If there was one time when we should be thinking more about space and what might be out there in space, 
it was then. UFOs were still being seen. They didn't stop suddenly at the end of 1969. So is it really credible to think that just because Project Blue Book was terminated, uh, that the US government ceased to have any interest in the phenomenon? No, of course not. The Air Force and all the military branches continued to study and investigate and deal with UFOs. And the reason for that is simple. UFOs never got the memo that they weren't supposed to exist. For decades, the Department of Defense successfully concealed the government's continued study of UFO phenomena. That is, until the existence of ATIP was revealed in 2017. Up until December of 2017, the United States military told us, we stopped studying UFOs in 1969 with the closure of Project Blue Book. We all suspected this was a lie, but now we know it was a lie. While the New York Times article about a secret government program to study UFOs was significant, it was almost overshadowed by another article published on their digital platform that very same day. One that revealed shocking footage of an extraordinary encounter involving two U.S. Navy fighter pilots. December 16th, 2017. As part of its expose on the classified ATIP program, the New York Times releases three leaked videos that were reportedly studied by the government. The footage appears to show encounters between U.S. Navy aircraft and unidentified flying objects. While the authenticity of the videos is not immediately confirmed by the government, many in the scientific community are compelled to examine them closely. When it comes to UFOs, because it's such a polarizing field, everybody asks for proof. Well, here, you now have data that scientists can look at. You have physical proof, you have visual representations of these vehicles with non-traditional propulsion, to say the least. Before the Navy tapes were released, a lot of the sightings were by hearsay. Somebody saw something in the sky. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. But now we have testable, reproducible, hard evidence of something that is flying in our skies by the United States Navy. We have metrics now. We can measure their activities frame by frame. We can calculate how fast they're maneuvering. The video that garnered the most attention was captured off the coast of San Diego, California in 2004. It shows an encounter between a squadron of F-18 fighter jets and an unidentified flying object that maneuvered unlike any aircraft known to man. The round shape of this mysterious aircraft has led many to refer to it as the Tic Tac object. One of the pilots flying that day was Commander David Fravor. At this point, when the incident happened, I had been flying for about 16 years, about 3,600 hours. This is a clear, no clouds, perfect Southern California day. And as I look off the right side, the guy in the backseat of the other jet says, hey, Skipper, do you, and I kind of finish the sentence, dude, do you see that? <laughs> and we're watching this little white object, and it's going like this. We get to about the 12 o'clock, it goes, boop, gets in front of my nose. You see it start to accelerate, and it goes, poof, and it's gone. I looked at it for over five minutes, and I chased it. I got within a half mile of it. It had no wings, it had no rotors, it had no known propulsion system, there's no plume coming out, there's no heat signature, no nothing. The Tic Tac moved much faster from a low speed to a very high speed in a much shorter time than any of our vehicles can do. It accelerated so quickly that if there was an actual occupant inside the Tic Tac, that it would have killed whoever was in there, unless they have some other technology that enables them to survive that. We do know uh, from modern physics that you can manipulate space-time, but we don't have that technology right now, and we really don't completely understand what that technology would look like. Maybe it looks like a Tic Tac. The other two videos released by the New York Times were recorded in January of 2015 off the coast of Florida. Just like David Fravor, 
the pilots flying in these encounters were baffled by what they saw. These are highly trained, uh, highly skilled Navy top guns. These people don't impress easily. And yet, when you listen to the voice tracks on these videos, you can hear how excited the pilots are as they're tracking and chasing these things. When they see something like that and get excited, we should all be excited too. Most experts agree that the videos show aircraft that are far more advanced than anything ever disclosed to the public. However, some scientists argue that these UFOs were not extraterrestrial spacecraft, but rather classified military drones. They are very advanced weapons being tested by the United States, Russia, and China, that is hypersonic drones. Hypersonic drones will also travel between Mach 5 and Mach 20. Hypersonic drones are also maneuverable, just like these sightings. However, they should leave some exhaust, and they should leave a sonic boom, neither of which we see with these sightings. These characteristics of the unidentified aerial phenomenon are beyond the known laws of physics, physics as we know it. We discounted that fairly quickly because the way these vehicles move so quick without any vapor trail, with uh, just something they're hard to comprehend. So of course, we're terribly curious, interested, and uh, basically in wonderment about how this is going on. Senator Reed was not the only high-profile member of the federal government speaking publicly about the incidents. In fact, it was of great bipartisan concern as a matter of national security. We have things flying over military installations, over military exercises, and other places, and we don't know what it is. Maybe it's a foreign adversary who's made a technological leap. I'm a physicist. It's my job to push the boundaries of the known laws of physics and even speculate about the unknown laws of physics. And looking at the characteristics of these UFO sightings, it's clear that this pushes the boundaries of everything known about aeronautics, about rocketry, and so it leaves open the possibility that they could be extraterrestrial. It's something that we cannot dismiss out of hand. There's one other thing that I noticed on the Tic Tac video, that there's an event horizon or a field bubble around the Tic Tac itself. And it's also in the other two videos. My personal analysis is that it's some sort of manipulation of space-time around it, enabling it to move like a warp drive does. You would have to be a very advanced civilization to begin to harness the energy at which gateways take place in the fabric of space and time. It is physics of the next thousand years, physics that is perhaps exploitable by an advanced civilization far beyond anything that we can muster on the planet Earth. Theoretical physicist has said that these recent UFO revelations have so shifted the narrative that previously it was up to people to prove that UFOs were extraterrestrial. Now it's for the government to prove that they aren't. Oh my gosh, dude. Is it possible that at least some of the UFOs that have been captured on video could be forms of otherworldly intelligence? So compelling are these images that they have now prompted countless investigations by the mainstream media, leaving many experts to wonder just what will be revealed next. April 27th, 2020. Washington, D.C. The Pentagon authorizes the official release of all three of the previously leaked ATIP videos, along with delivering official confirmation that they are authentic evidence documenting encounters between U.S. Navy personnel and unidentified aerial phenomena. This unprecedented disclosure 
generates media attention around the world. The normal state of affairs is that this would never come out. Like, that's the norm. So the fact that this came out at all is actually a win for the public. Prior to this, there had been people claiming these were hoaxes. Despite the fact that those videos were available, they were not officially acknowledged. And here's the United States Navy saying, no, these actually are unknown objects that our pilots did encounter that we don't know how to explain them conventionally. It used to be that when you talk to another physicist about flying saucers and UFOs, their eyes would simply roll up into the sky and they would shake their heads. Scientists are now open to the idea that maybe there could be some justification for these sightings. Because of this ocean of data coming from the United States military, the burden of proof has shifted. What we've seen with these disclosures is they're not coming from whistleblowers. They're not coming from UFO researchers. They're coming from the government. According to UFO researchers, the amount of government disclosure regarding UFOs has been increasing ever since ATIP was revealed in 2017. But after years of secrecy, why is the government choosing to be more forthcoming now? I've been thinking and writing about UFO disclosure for many years, and when you're looking at the things that have occurred in the last few years, really starting 2017 and then picking up speed, you know, people are inclined to ask, is this some form of a disclosure rollout by the government? This is one of the most exciting moments within the history of the UFO mystery. I have never seen anything like this. Not only do we have increased acknowledged frequency of UFO encounters with our military, but additionally, we have individuals stepping up, high-ranking individuals stepping up and telling little bits about what they can and what they know about the UFO problem, as I call it. I do believe that there have always been factions within the Pentagon command structure that have favored this. The Pentagon, like any other massive labyrinthian bureaucracy, has got all kinds of factions. So there have always been those who demand secrecy on all kinds of issues, including UFOs. And there have always been others who don't agree with that policy. And I think what's happening with UFOs is we now have a web, we have instant communication, and people who have the power, they realize, like, this secret's not going to last forever. The American people and the people of the world have a right to know UFOs are as real as the airplanes flying overhead. There are hearings taking place. It confirms that the public really does have an ongoing interest in this, a deep and abiding interest. It confirmed that our government has an ongoing interest in it. They just haven't been sharing it with us. And it suggests that we need to know more. When you have a state of denial of something that important year after year, and you can't get access to information about it so that you as the informed public can't make a decision, then you're not informed. So we've got a system that's gonna run off the rails here. We've gotta believe in ourselves at some point. We have to believe in our ability to handle this. Otherwise, what are we? We're gonna be children our whole lives and just be spoon-fed BS. What do you know about UFOs? Brief us, and in fact, brief us so it can be made public, not so it's all you know, retracted. Now, is this going to crack open the books on UFOs with every intelligence agency on planet Earth? No, that's just not happening. There's no motivation to do that. But will we learn something? Yeah, we're going to learn something. While many UFO researchers and journalists take the position that full government disclosure of what is known about UFOs is of great public interest, some experts insist that there are still valid reasons to proceed with caution. Until you completely understand the situation, these things should absolutely be kept classified until such times we realize that it is beneficial for the world to release it. The problem with disclosure is that if we are being monitored and studied by extraterrestrials, and if there's the possibility of an imminent threat, then when government gets involved in any of this, which it inevitably will, their basic instinct will be to keep this secret. 
Even though the news media is shining new light on the mystery of intelligent life beyond Earth, some experts believe much more has been discovered and that governments have instituted new programs not only to investigate this phenomenon, but quite possibly to protect us against it. December 20th, 2019. The United States federal government announces the establishment of a sixth branch of the military, the Space Force. However, what especially captures the curiosity of some experts and UFO researchers alike is the phrasing of its mission statement. If you look at the congressional mandate for Space Force, it's very interesting. The wording talks about deterring aggression, not only in and to space, but from space. And people have speculated over those words and said, what does that mean, deterring aggression from space? And some have said, that is precisely talking about an alien threat. And I can't rule that out. If there's an alien threat, it's very likely that the US military already knows. There are those in the UFO research community who believe that not only is the US military aware of an extraterrestrial threat to our planet, but that they've known about this threat for some time. And as evidence, they point to the fact that an unusually high number of UFO sightings have taken place near nuclear missile bases over the last 70 years. Many have speculated that it's no coincidence that the modern UFO phenomenon really started very shortly after the first detonations of atomic weapons. It's almost as if we were being watched by extraterrestrials, and they were saying to themselves, the kids have found the matches. Whoever is flying these unidentified craft have an intense interest in our nuclear facilities. They started appearing in New Mexico uh, right after the birth of the nuclear age, over nuclear labs where weapons were designed, over nuclear power plants, and over nuclear missile bases. A series of nuclear missile bases along the US-Canadian border were all visited, one right after another, by unidentified craft. This famously happened on March 16, 1967, at a place called Malmstrom Air Force Base in the state of Montana. That's a very major installation with nuclear missiles, with ICBMs. A red glowing object was seen by multiple above ground personnel. At the same time, you had at least 10 of those LCCs went offline, 10, 10 ICBM missiles. What's interesting is that all of those missiles are not hardwired to each other. So if one went down, it should never have affected any of the others. They all went down, like bing, 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 all in succession. The unknown craft interfered with the launch control systems. If we had to go to war, if we had to fire those missiles, they were in, that, in effect disabled. Boeing, which manufactured these and was responsible for the maintenance, did a detailed analysis of them in the aftermath, and they could not find any conventional explanation. The same thing has happened in Russia. I traveled there a couple of times in the early 90s and was able to secure a couple of hundred pages of previously classified documents from the Russian Ministry of Defense in which they described a particular incident at an ICBM base in the Ukraine. A UFO appears over the base it makes these remarkable demonstrations witnessed by hundreds of military officers. It breaks into two, it melds back apart. And then at one point, the launch control system lit up like a Christmas tree. Something entered the launch control codes. The Russians are freaking out because it's not them. They can't turn it off. And then poof, the UFO goes away. The system goes back to normal. The Ministry of Defense sent a team in, took the machines apart, tried to figure it out, but they couldn't. Those kind of things have happened hundreds of times all over the world. All cases where it's alleged that nuclear weapons have been interfered with have been taken extremely seriously. When the Senate Intelligence Committee published the Intelligence Authorization Act for fiscal year 2021, 
there was a section in it under the heading Unidentified Aerial Threats, and it effectively talks about UFOs. And it then goes on to discuss cases where UFOs have been seen over military bases, including nuclear installations. And the Senate Intelligence Committee have demanded a report on this from Director of National Intelligence. They're seen over nuclear missiles. Why? This is seriously dangerous technology. And if they're here looking at us, ask yourself, why would they not want to be observing our relationship with nuclear technology? It's probably the single most significant and destructive technology that we operate. So yeah, I think nuclear tech would be of great interest to any observing intelligence. I personally think that's exactly why they have monitored nuclear technology. Eight months after the Space Force was created, the Department of Defense confirmed the existence of a new program called the UAPTF, or the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force. UFO researchers claim that this organization was created as a reaction to the high number of UFO sightings near military bases. Right now, the UAP Task Force is a very specific assignment. They study incidents where UAPs interact with US military facilities. Some of the people involved in the UAP task force have been asking pilots to please record the incidents, send us photos, radar information, videos if you've got them. Some of the pilots have cooperated, and there's the photograph taken by a pilot at an F-18 on his cell phone. It doesn't have a shape like any aircraft that anyone's ever seen. It's significant because although it leaked out there's nothing in that to actually force the UAP task force to give up anything, really. I think they're encouraged to report back to Congress and then therefore to the public. But whether they actually will, that's a really open question. The UAP task force is investigating aerial threats while the United States Space Force is preparing to defend the planet. But is humankind really ready for an encounter with an advanced alien life form? Some experts believe that we're already being trained for it today, whether we realize it or not. October 29th, 2020. After analyzing data collected by the Kepler Space Telescope, NASA makes a remarkable announcement there appears to be an astronomical number of stars in the Milky Way galaxy that, like the sun, are orbited by potentially life-sustaining planets. The best estimate today is that there are at least 300 million cousins of Earth just in our galaxy. That's more than enough real estate for some intelligent life. Are we alone in this huge, amazingly diverse cosmos? Or are we just one of many? We're looking at these other stars that also host planets that could be like ours. If life exists everywhere it can, we'll find its signatures within five to 10 years. The question of whether or not we're alone in the universe, and the related issue of whether we're being visited and interacted with by extraterrestrials is one of the biggest and most profound questions we can ask. And I think there's something about that question that's not just intellectual, it's emotional. Finding out that it's not just us, that there are others like us in the wider universe would fundamentally change everything. While astronomers continue efforts to definitively answer the question of whether or not extraterrestrial life really does exist, another, perhaps equally profound, question arises. Just how would humanity react if it were to be proven true? There was a report saying that perhaps we should gradually become accustomed to the idea that there could be intelligent civilizations in outer space. And I think that's a good idea. I think the shock of encountering a civilization more advanced than us could create all sorts of paranoia, all sorts of bizarre dysfunctional behavior in the general public. So I think it wouldn't hurt 
to scientifically go through what we might experience as we explore outer space. I think initially the scary thing is we would be confronted with this and didn't know what to do, right? However, I think the effect of finding life in the universe will be way less scary than people were worried about because we are taking this one step at a time. Now that we're actually searching for planets like ours in the universe and signs of life on those without actively contacting it, by just looking and seeing what's out in the universe, I think that prepared us. Look, one third of the American public already believes that not only are there aliens out there, but they're visiting Earth. They think there's, you know, life in the upper atmosphere zipping around in UFOs. And they're not rioting in the streets about that. So I don't think that people would go nuts. While the public remains both curious and wary of just what the federal government has learned about the existence of life beyond Earth, scientists working in the private sector are currently putting plans in place to prepare for the moment when that discovery is verified. Organizations such as SETI, uh, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, have protocols for the sorts of things that would happen if proof of an extraterrestrial civilization was found through detecting a signal on a radio telescope. And they even have documents with titles like post-detection protocol. And the protocol says only three things. It says one, check out the signal to make sure you're not being fooled. Secondly, tell everybody. And third, don't broadcast anything back until, you know, the international community says it's okay to do that. But there's no power of law behind this, right? It's just a, a code of good practices. And, you know, you get a code of good practices when you go to summer camp, perhaps, but it doesn't mean that everybody obeys them. So you can have all the scientific agreements and memoranda uh, you like, but the reality is government would step in and lock everything down. Where there's a signal, there's a message, and where there's message, there's information. Knowledge is power, and knowledge of extraterrestrial technology, even if it was just picking up a signal with encoded information, about an extraterrestrial civilization is something that any individual nation state would want for itself. Are we really prepared for the reality of intelligent extraterrestrial life? Whether we believe it to be true or not, the evidence is mounting that one day soon we may come face to face with it. But if that does happen, how will we react and how? Will they? December 16th, 2020. While being interviewed by economist Tyler Cowen, former CIA director John Brennan makes a surprising comment about the government's recent investigations of UFOs. It could involve some type of um, activity that uh, some might uh, say uh, constitutes a, a, a different form of life. Brennan says that some of the unexplained aerial phenomena they studied may constitute a different form of life. That's a powerful statement coming from the former director of the CIA. Do you get these individuals who have little pieces of information about this big UFO problem? And then it makes you wonder what other secrets people have in other high positions and what they're gonna say. According to many UFO researchers, Brennan's stunning admission is part of a larger process of slow but steady disclosure. There are a lot of variables when it comes to the idea of disclosure. Some people have said the information would be slowly drip-fed out there. Well, isn't that precisely what's happening now? The US Navy is releasing videos of their aircraft chasing these things. We know that there have been classified briefings in Congress. The DOD has set up this UFO task force, Senate Intelligence Committee has asked for a report. It's almost as if we're being prepared for something. Could it be true that decision makers in the American government are intentionally releasing information to the public regarding UFO phenomena? Some researchers and journalists insist they are and that they may soon make the ultimate unambiguous and sobering revelation. 
that extraterrestrial spacecraft are known to have visited our planet for decades, if not centuries. If the president were to decide to make an announcement, yeah, there's an ET civilization, we've made contact, and we'll get back to you with some details a little bit later. They've been here for hundreds of years. They have technology that could wipe us out. Don't worry about it, we're on top of this. You can't stop there. You can't just stop with that information. People would demand to know more. People will want to know, how on earth have you been able to keep this secret from us all these years? What does that say about our media? What does that say about our academic institutions, which were asleep at the switch? What does it say about our political leadership? Everything is gonna come out, and there's a real danger of them losing control over the narrative. I will argue that not only is it our right to know, we have a duty to investigate and ask questions and demand to know. Because it's one thing to say that life exists out in the universe. Statistically, everybody can agree with that, great. But it's another thing to say that they're visiting here. Because we then have more information accessible to us that we didn't have before. That's the evolution of the human and collective consciousness. What we think of today as the UFO phenomenon should be radically different than what we perceive it to be 50 years from now. The UFO secret's no longer tenable the way that it is. This secret will end. What happens after that is the big question. But the fact that it's got a shelf life, and that shelf life is expiring. Oh my gosh, dude. Wow. <laughs> is it possible that the continued stream of investigative reports video evidence and declassified government files all point to the inevitable arrival of extraterrestrial visitors? Or could it be that our leaders are slowly conditioning us to accept the fact that they are already here? For now, the ultimate disclosure still lies hidden in the pages of America's book of secrets. <laughs>